tracking people. It's your man, Cousin T, aka the Alpha Wingman, representing the high level technicians operating globally and beyond. So, listen, today I wanted to address a question that I get often um, from men of a variety of ages. <clears throat> and this question is Is there such a thing as too much pussy? Uh, and I'm sure. Uh, young guys ask this a lot I, if they have mentors in their lives like older brothers, older cousins, uncles um, and dads <clears throat> and middle aged guys can ask that if they're searching for their way or try to find their stride or catch their stride or find their rhythm um, but it, when you ask older men this question the majority of them sit back they'll probably put their hand to their chin and reminisce and think about all those times and all those exploits and all of the lessons that they learned regarding this subject. So I just wanted to go through a brief summary of stages and the lifespan of uh, a modern man and I'd say a classic man because the information that I have and the experience that I have is a combination of conversations, my own personal experiences, and just interacting with men of all ages, but men of a certain age in particular, that being men over 50. <coughs> Pardon me. So ask the question again, is there a such thing as too much pussy? Well, the answer initially is maybe. So if we start with the age group or the age range of 18 to 22, this is the range of young men who are still exploring. Now technically, men are encouraged to explore for a good portion of their lives and that's because given the, the type of relationship that you may have with a given woman, uh, there's always room to explore each other's space. But when we're talking about men in particular, exploring what works for them, that 18 to 22 year old period is basically the period where you're getting your C legs or P legs, as it were. And so basically a young man is trying to figure out what's what, you know, get the anatomy down, trying to understand himself. And so during that time period, he may or may not rack up a large number depending on, again, uh, his disposition, how he's mature, uh, what type of mentorship he has, and the access that he has to women. So the next age range would be from 23 to 27. And in this spectrum, there's a lot of partying going on. Um, you're out of college or f finishing up your graduate degree, depending on where you are, or you're already working, you're in a trade, you're traveling, you're basically honing your sexual skills at this age group. You're learning about pacing, you know, what it takes to slow down uh, your rhythm, what it, what, it, what it means to be more so in the moment. Trying not to come so quick, trying to uh, see what works uh, on the female end and, and make sure that she is uh, satisfied because during this age period, 23 to 27, is where you want to rack up those quality notches, quality notches. So that's gonna be a, a theme um, ongoing in a young man's life from this point on. In the age group of 28 to 33, this is where a guy is, you know, getting in his career, he's got responsibilities, he's got bills, the partying slows down, he's more concerned about uh, advancement, he's starting to save and invest. This is where he's becoming more particular about the company that he keeps on the female side. Of course, there's plenty of one night stands, of course, there's still exploration. But it's between the ages of 28 and 33 where the majority of modern men actually get married. So this is, this is a crossroads, um, uh, so to speak, for a lot of young men uh, in the modern 
um, the modern scene. So a guy could go one of two ways. Depending on, again, his disposition, and in this sector, we call it the select manosphere or the alpha manosphere, he's basically not really looking to settle down anytime soon. He's focusing on what motivates him, what drives him. He's focusing on establishing himself and building um, his legacy. So women are becoming more structured. His time with women are becoming more structured. So he's barely getting to understand <clears throat> the benefits of having a roster and what his roster positions mean for him in his life. Next, you have the age group of 34 to 40. Now, this is when the real building begins. This is when a man starts to see the horizon from a vantage point on the mountain and he begins to understand how women fit into your life and not the other way around. You're not the one that's necessarily fitting into a women's lives. They are fitting into your life, into your trajectory, your goals, the things that you plan, your trips, your movements. And um, at this point in a man's development, he's now curating his rotation. He's now selecting, being more selective with his roster positions. It's not, it's not just necessarily women who quote unquote choose him or respond to um, his uh, choosing signals or his uh, cold approach. Um, it's quality women who he's sought out to fulfill certain roles um, that he needs with his particular program that is now starting to gain momentum and catch legs. I got more about the breakdown of a select man's roster over on the Patreon side. Definitely will link, leave a link for that. But now this brings us to the grand finale or the granddaddy of this particular spectrum analysis. This is the 41 plus and the 51 plus. Now, I call this the elite roster. I mean, this is the Mac Daddy. This is the Cat Daddy. This is the most uh, interesting man and in, man in the world roster. This is the Hugh Hefner. This is the whoever you want to throw out there who is a man of a certain age who had an amazing prime. But guess what? The modern man over 41, the modern man over 51 has extended and enhanced that prime. And so he's grown his opportunities and his investments. He's grown uh, his career positioning into entrepreneurship so that he's transitioned from having to uh, answer to people. And guess what? When you're used to not having to answer to someone, you're not necessarily going to be married. You're not necessarily going to be tied down. You're calling the shots at this point. This is the golden opportunity age. So when you think about a rotation or a roster for a gentleman of this certain um, age class or this spectrum, this is totally the gold cup or the gold standard for rosters. At this point in his life, Everything becomes all about opportunity costs. And the select men, the masses of the universe out there, understand what I mean when I say that. Life is about time and the most important ways to spend those times. So he has handpicked select uh, members of his roster and they can age, they can uh, range in age from, believe it or not, 18 to I'm going to say 40 or if he's interested 24 to 60 it's totally up to him totally uh, how he has his life figured out he likes to go to the casino he likes to travel he likes to go to the opera he likes to go to jazz fest he likes to hit islands up he's got different roster participants for each one of those activities and He's also got a farm team. Now, the farm team is full of those draft picks who men of a certain age call mentees. This is the age where you become 
the sage mentor. And it's not a cliche. You're not necessarily a sponsor. And guess what? To the men who are not familiar with the, the mentor-mentee relationship and the, the male-female dynamic with that, young women absolutely, positively adore, adore coming under the mentorship of a wise, learned, worldly man who knows what he wants, who knows what to do, who has the freedom of motion. He can come and go as he pleases, and he's willing to bless her with all of this uh, knowledge, uh, skill sets, put her on a path. He can put her in front of people. He has connections. This is such a valuable um, thing or opportunity for young women who understand. Trust me, I've had plenty of conversations with uh, college chicks who will just be quiet and listen <laughs> when you're when you're spitting that real knowledge, that real life knowledge. Because believe it or not, they are very intelligent and they are very pragmatic. So I'm gonna leave this one at, uh, at right here. And the next one, I'm gonna go into how to establish and maintain the cycle of mentorship with the young lady. But for now, once again, as always, this is your man, Cousin T, AKA the Alpha Wingman, saying stay sharp and mission focused. Later.